This is your USMNT Abroad Weekend update from September 1st to September 3rd of 2023. Hi, I'm Daniel Filippo, and welcome to Tactical Manager TV and welcome to the US Men's National Team Abroad Series where every Monday we update you on how the Yanks did abroad over the weekend. Now, before we start, you can kindly hit the like button for no other reason but to feed my ego. And number two is we might, after the international break, start to cover the Italian Serie B. I mean, Tanner Testman got called in for the U.S. men's national team to replace Johnny Cardoso. Of course, Tanner Testman now got injured this weekend, so we don't know if he's going to make it to camp. But Christopher Lund also got called in, and he also plays in the Serie B for Palermo. So listen, be patient. We're going to add the Serie B to this series after the international break. Now, let's play the intro and start with the updates. Oh, wait, 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 and I forgot to tell you one thing. This week, we will have three episodes of an interview we had with Jeff Cameron. Okay, so just stay tuned for that. All right, now we can play the intro. And since we do it by leagues, let's start with the English Premier League. And the first player we're going to talk about is Matt Turner from Nottingham Forest and Ethan Horvath, I guess. On Saturday, Matt Turner started and played the full 90 minutes for Nottingham Forest during their 1-0 win over Chelsea in the English Premier League. When did Chelsea become a mid-table club? The good news here is that Matt Turner holds a clean sheet against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. The context is Matt Turner barely did much he had like one or two saves all game long one of them was late in the game so essentially he held a clean sheet because Chelsea is not very good I do want to say one thing though Nottingham Forest did sign a new goalkeeper Odysseus Vlahodimos comes from Benfica now the question is will Matt Turner lose his starting spot I'm not sure I hope not. I think it's probably 50-50. Now, will Ethan Horvath be pushed away from Nottingham Forest? Yes, absolutely. He's not going to play at all or probably even make the bench. By the way, quick question. Did you watch the game between Nottingham Forest and Chelsea? Why do some big Chelsea fan accounts have a thing for Conor Gallagher? The dude is literally a track and field athlete pretending to be a soccer player. And listen, I'm not a Chelsea fan, so... I guess that's not my problem and that's my non-biased opinion. It just kind of reminds me of that time where they were hyping Mason Cardio Mount. It's the same thing. I know a lot of people have been critical of Conor Gallagher, but I, I just don't get why some of the big Chelsea accounts keep hyping that player. It's literally like a player just full of Red Bull and no technical ability at all. Next up would have been Chris Richards from Crystal Palace, but once again, he played no minutes for Palace over the weekend, and it looks like he's the third or fourth option at the center back position, probably the fourth option, so don't expect him to get many minutes this semester. Hopefully, he gets a loan in the January transfer window to a club that actually plays him. The other player would have been Austin Trusty from Sheffield United, and he also got zero minutes for Sheffield United, over the weekend. So we're going to skip those two and we're going to go to the Fulham boys, which are Tim Ream and Jedi Robinson. On Saturday, Ream and Robinson both started and both played the full 90 minutes for Fulham during their 5-1 loss to Manchester City. So Tim Ream scored a tap-in for Fulham, but his defense also conceded five goals. But it was against Manchester City, so it can happen. It's understandable. It's not good, but it's also not terrible. Okay, it sort of is terrible, but I guess you get what I mean, right? Manchester City is probably the best team in the world. But right now, Tim Ream has one goal this season in the English Premier League for Fulham, while their center forward, Raul Jimenez, has zero. So Tim Ream, the center back, has more goals than Raul Jimenez this season for Fulham. The next Premier League player we were going to talk about would be Tyler Adams from Burnmouth. However, Tyler's still recovering from injury and probably at least one month away from returning, maybe a little bit less. He, it's still not clear. So Tyler Adams wasn't available this weekend because he's still recovering from injury. Last but not least, we got the American-Italian dual national winger Luca Coleosho from Burnley. On Saturday, Coleosho started and played 68 minutes which is one minute short of 69. Nice. 
for Burnley during their 5-2 loss to Tottenham in the English Premier League. Kolyosha got the assist for Burnley in their first goal of the match. He was able to beat the defender down the left flank and put in a low cross for Lyle Foster to score for Burnley. Again, I said this last week, Kolyosha has a lot to work on, but he is extremely promising talent. Like very talented to start in the premier league at age 19 and show flashes of talent it means you are a promising player sure he's struggling he has been struggling but again he is a dual national we should 100 percent be recruiting and i know for a fact u.s soccer is recruiting now that we left england and the same thing i said last weekend let's go to a country that has better food we're gonna go to italy and go cover the Serie A. so why don't we start with christian pulisic and Yunus musa from AC Milan. On Friday, Pulisic started and played 77 minutes for Milan during their 2-1 win over Roma in the Serie A. That's three wins in three games for Milan in the Serie A this season. For the same match, Yunus Musa stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes. So in regards to Pulisic's performance, let's put it this way. I think out of the three first games, this was the worst performance Pulisic had. By worst, I don't mean bad. I thought he was solid. It's just that in the first two games, I thought he was somewhat brilliant in this one he was just okay good or as i said solid look at it this way christian pulisic almost scored from a close range one hit shot after making a good run but huid patricio made a brilliant save for roma i also think that calabria does not offer christian pulisic the same support teo hernandez offers rafael leon on the left flank calabria is the one that would be offering that on the right flank because christian pulisic is playing as a right winger pulisic has been great for milan but i believe they would get even more out of him on the left wing but unfortunately that position belongs to rafael leon and Rafael Leão ain't losing it. By the way, speaking of Rafael Leão, what goal was that? The goal he scored in the match. If you didn't see it, go watch the highlights. Seriously, he scored a brilliant goal and you should definitely go check it out like right now. Well, actually not right now. Don't leave the video. It will hurt the YouTube algorithm after you finish the abroad. Go watch it. Still in Italy, we have the Juve boys, and that is Wes McKinney and Timothy Weah, which they keep subbing each other out in games. On Sunday, McKinney started and played 84 minutes for Juventus during their 2-0 win over Empoli in the Serie A. Timothy Weah came in the 84th minute for, yes, you guessed it, Weston McKinney. So essentially, that's what happened in the first two games, but flipped, where Weston McKinney would come in for Timothy Weah. I didn't watch this game because, you know, there's only so much soccer one person can watch over the weekend. But here is the stats that Weston McKinney put out throughout this match. For this one, McKinney had one block shot, 48 touches, a .13 XG. He also won three out of three tackles. He had one clearance two interceptions and three recoveries. He did also win the one aerial duel he had, and it looks like he played as a right wing back slash right midfielder, and the same goes for Timothy Weah. Okay, let's leave Italy and head to Germany. So why don't we start with Gio Reyna from Borussia Dortmund in the Bundesliga. So Gio Reyna is still coming back from injury. He is training. However, US Soccer came out this past week and said that Gio Reyna actually was dealing with a fracture which was during the game against the rude Canadians. I mean, I kept telling you guys the Canadians were rude, but no one ever took me seriously, just like the fake news Jamaicans, the Bitcoin Salvadorians, L3. Uh, but, you know, I'm just the crazy guy on Twitter, even though I'm usually right. So Gio Reyna had a fracture this entire time, and U.S. Soccer and Borussia Dortmund didn't bother to, you know, just say it, let everyone know. I don't know, man. There you have it. You see, they could have told us, they didn't, but now you know. Gio Reyna was dealing with a fracture, and he should be back soon. The other play in Germany that we would report on would be Brendan Aronson, but Brendan Aronson didn't play for Union Berlin over the weekend because he was suspended due to a red card that he got in the previous weekend. So let's skip Brendan Aronson, and now let's go to John Brooks from Hoffenheim and Kevin Paredes from Wolfsburg because they faced each other over the weekend. On Saturday, John Brooks started and played the full 90 minutes for Hoffenheim during their 3-1 win over Wolfsburg in the Bundesliga. Defensively, Brooks is to blame for the goal scored by Wolfsburg. He has a lot of blame in that goal. However, besides that mistake, he was very solid defensively throughout the match. 
and he scored the first goal for Hoffenheim in the match at the end of the first half to tie the game. But again, until Burr is gone, John Brooks will likely not even get a tiny little look with the U.S. men's national team, which means he might be done forever with the national team unless Burr gets fired. As for Kevin Paredes, he was subbed in for Wolfsburg around the 68th minute as they were trying to come back from a 2-1 deficit, but the game ended up being 3-1 for Hoffenheim. Still in Germany, we have Joe Scali and now PFOC, both from Borussia Mönchengladbach. On Saturday, Joe Scali started and played 82 minutes for Gladbach during their 2-1 loss to Bayern. For the same match, PFOC came off the bench at the 59th minute to make his debut for his new club. Yes, Gladbach just signed PFOC this week from Union Berlin on a loan with a 5 million euro option to buy. As for Joe Scali, he was subbed off with an apparent injury, but he did also walk on his own. While I'm recording this, I have no update on that on whether he'll be cut or stay with the US men's national team camp. If there's anything, maybe I'll pin a comment, but I believe Joe Scali is fine and he probably is even arriving in camp or have, has already arrived in camp by the time you're watching this. Next up is Paxton Aronson, the brother of Brendan Aronson that plays for Eintracht Frankfurt. On Sunday, Paxton started off on the bench and came in at the 80th minute for Eintracht Frankfurt to help them pull a late 1-1 draw against Cologne in the Bundesliga. Paxton Aronson got the assist for their goal and it was actually a nice assist. He's looking sharp, moving the ball fast. Hopefully he builds off this and his Bundesliga minutes start to go up. And in my personal opinion, Paxton Aronson should have been the one to be in the US men's national team roster ahead of Ben Kramaski. But you know, lastly in Germany in the Bundesliga, we have Leonard Maloney that plays for Heidenheim. I'm going to have to learn that team's name very soon, but I'll try my best. On Friday, Maloney started and went to full 90 minutes for Heidenheim during their 2-2 drop with Borussia Dortmund in the Bundesliga. Maloney once was a Dortmund player himself. We're done with Germany. Now we're going to go to Spain, to España. And we're going to talk about Luca de la Torre from Celta de Vigo. Friday, Luca de la Torre started and played the full 90 minutes for Celta de Vigo during their 3-2 win over Almeria in La Liga. So that's good news because last week he was subbed off around the 80th minute against Real Madrid with an apparent muscle injury. But clearly he is fine as he played the full 90 minutes. That's it for Spain. Now we're going to go make a trip to France and start with Balogun now from Monaco. On Saturday, Balogun start off on the bench for Monaco and was subbed in around the 74th minute when they already had a 3-0 lead. He literally just arrived, so just the fact that he got his debut out of the way right away, to me, it's good news. His performance was quiet and he did get a yellow card for diving, but again, the debut itself is already a win. And now he must fight for a starting job, which won't be easy with Ben Yedder playing. Unless Ben Yedder goes to jail, then Balogun will probably be a locked in starter. And if you're wondering if he might go to jail or not, you just just type on Google and, and you'll find out yourself. Uh, if I say anything here, I have to say allegedly and I don't feel like doing it. Now, there's another American that plays in Ligue 1 in France, and that is Emmanuel Sabi, and he didn't get any minutes over the weekend. I think you guys jinxed him because some people told me to cover him, and then I decided to cover him this weekend in France, and then he didn't come off the bench. That's the update on Emmanuel Sabi. Now that we're done with the top five leagues, let's go to the non-top five leagues in Europe. And we can start with the Divisie, which is in the Netherlands, and we'll start with PSV that has Malik Tillman, Ricardo Pepe, and Sergio Dest. On Saturday, Des started and played 84 minutes as a right back for PSV during their 4-0 win over RKC. As for Tillman and Pepe, they were subbed in the 72nd minute when they already had a 3-0 lead, which is essentially what we call in basketball garbage time. Here's the thing. I don't really expect Pepe to get many minutes over De Jong. De Jong is fantastic. So the only way they, that Pepe would do that this season is if De Jong is getting some rest or is injured. So his situation is actually not that concerning because he was a full transfer and he's more of a long-term signing. So the situation of Pepe is less concerning. Now, in regards to Tillman's situation, on the other hand, it is a bit concerning to me because he's on a loan and he's not playing much besides so far like minutes like this one, which as I said in basketball, we call it garbage minutes. Tillman did score score, which is encouraging. A goal is a goal. But again, Chucky Lozano is also back with PSV and he'll be a locked in starter. So I'm happy that Malik Tillman scored, but I'm actually also fairly concerned with his minutes so far this season. Not so much with Pepe because I don't expect him to play that much this season. Any minutes he gets is a win to me. But again, Tillman scored. So let's at least celebrate that. 
The next player would have been Taylor Booth from Utrecht, but he is still injured that didn't play. So we're going to skip him and we're going to go to Jordi Mihailovic from AZ Alkmaar, also in the Netherlands. On Sunday, Mihailovic started off on the bench and came in at the 72nd minute for AZ Alkmaar during their 2-0 win over Vitezzi. Okay, we're done with the Netherlands. Let's go back to the fish and chip merchants and go back to England for the EFL Championship, which is the second division of Italy. With that said, why don't we talk about Josh Sargent from Norwich? And Josh Sargent is injured. And based on what his coach, David Wagner, said, he'll be out for a few months, which sucks because we, he was off to a great start this season. It really looked like he was going to have a season with 20 plus goals. And one correction from last week. Last week, I said Josh Sargent's coach was Daniel Fark. That was his old coach. Daniel Fark coached him in the past. His current coach is David Wagner, the, the American. So let's skip on that. Now let's go to Haji Wright from Coventry. On Saturday, Haji Wright started and played the full 90 minutes for Coventry during their 3-3 draw with Watford in the EFL Championship. For some reason, the stat sheet did not count it as an assist, but Haji Wright did provide the assist at the 87th minute off a low cross for Coventry's third goal to equalize the match. So yes, he did get an assist. Along with that, Haji Wright looked dangerous in multiple occasions with even good dribbling ability in one-on-one -on -one moments and good runs. I'm liking what I'm seeing from Haji Wright so far in the English second division. And maybe he is locking in that starting job. I think he's earned it at this point. We'll see after the international break if he's a locked-in starter for Coventry. But I do think his performances have earned him the starting job in the English second division. So I was going to go to Scotland and talk about Cameron Carter Vickers, but he is still injured. So he's not playing for Celtic. So let's skip on Scotland. Let's leave the UK and let's head to Belgium. And why don't we start with Gabriel Sonina from Eupen. On Saturday, Sonina started and went the full 90 minutes for Eupen during their 1-0 loss to Michelin in Belgium. Now still in Belgium, let's talk about Mark McKenzie from Genk. And on Sunday, Mark McKenzie started and played 85 minutes for Genk during their 1-1 draw with Underleck. Still in Belgium, because we're not leaving yet. There's two more players to go. We have Sam Vines from Antwerp. And on Sunday, Sam Vines started and played 29 minutes for Antwerp during their 2-2 draw with Union Saint. The good news here is he scored for Antwerp in this match. The bad news is, as you can see, he left at the 29th minute, which means he left with an injury. How severe is Sam Vines' injury? I don't know. We don't know at the time of this recording. We'll update you next week. Oh, and there's another good news here for Sam Vines if he's not seriously injured, if it's just a minor injury Antwerp did qualify to the Champions League group stage so if Sam Vines is healthy he will be playing in the Champions League this semester lastly in Belgium we have Brian Reynolds from Westerlo and on Saturday Brian Reynolds started and went the full 90 minutes for Westerlo during their 2-1 loss to Circo Brugge now in the future we might even have some updates on the Greek League and the set Italian Serie B. And the Greek League has Eric Palmer Brown that we might even have an interview with him here at the channel. Now let's go to South America for a quick update on Johnny Cardoso. The update is Johnny Cardoso has a minor ankle injury and he should be out for 7 to 10 days. So he's not available for the U.S. Men's National Team camp. He was cut from the roster, but he should be back with Internacional very soon. As I said, seven to 10 days. So two weeks right after international break, he will be back. All right, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button before you go. And that we have three episodes coming up with Jeff Cameron, former U.S. men's national team player this week. And then over the weekend, the United States men's national team actually plays a game with the return of Greg Berhalter. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Have a great day. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.